Welcome to Talking Technique No Treble. This is Ari. Um, a while ago, I posted in the Facebook No Treble group, which, by the way, is an excellent bass hang. Um, I posted the question, which tunes give you trouble from a technique standpoint? And several uh, posters were saying Spain by Chick Corea. Uh, Spain's a great tune to know, a super jam tune. Um, it's, a, it's a great one to have under your belt, and it's really fun to play. It's a fast samba. It's basically in B minor, in the key of B minor, but it's kind of cool because it really ends in B major. So if a tune is in minor and you was, it, 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 it is ending on the major, it's called a Picardy third. So there you go. Uh, if you look at the chord changes of the first of the A section, it's basically an entire diatonic cycle. So it starts out on the four and then it goes to the five and then it goes to the flat six and it goes back to the five chord and then it goes through the entire diatonic cycle. Four, seven, three, six, two, five, one. And during the solo section, it basically uses the same changes, but it uh, lengthens them. So what used to be two bars in the A section in the solo section is twice as long. Harmonically it's not very difficult but there are a couple of unison spots in that tune that can um, warrant some you know technique shedding to get there. So I'm going to show you how you can work those spots up today. I'll just play it for you up to tempo. <laughs> The tempo of this tune is quite fast. It's half notes at 136. Now in the Chuck Share book, he writes it out cut time, so quarter notes and eighth notes. For some people, it's easier to conceptualize this tune written out as 16th notes. So I'll break it down for you and uh, show you uh, some ways on how to practice this. The tonal material is a B minor pentatonic and then later on goes to F sharp uh, 7 and then goes back to B. I think one of the reasons why this lick is so memorable and just so cool is because it really has it going on in terms of rhythmic displacement. For example, this beginning rhythm is then repeated a beat later as but because there's a beat in between we just kind of don't perceive it as that but it's still kind of cool because you, you you it's it's kind of getting on to the idea that there's something happening that's being repeated there's a second rhythm that he plays with uh a lot in this piece and that's the quarter note followed by two eighth notes so right it's this beginning here and then it follows suit again at um, this spot so when it goes but in the first instance we have this on the downbeat and then the second instant it's moved over in the middle of the bar and it's anticipated Right? It's the same rhythm though. And then again we have that same rhythm here, and then here, and then here, then once more here. It's that same rhythm, but it's kind of hard to perceive because it's wedged into these other, it starts on different beats of the bar. And then there's another one that's here. Again, this one is anticipated. So he plays with several rhythmic figures that he places into different spots in the bar and that kind of makes it so memorable and so cool. We made you tracks with just a metronome and castagnettes tapping out the rhythm. Use this to practice along with. You have these tracks in several different tempos so you can gradually inch your way up to the fast tempos. First you start just learning the notes. That's just a regular B minor and then right those are just the notes.
Well, let's loop the first four bars at tempo 75. This uh, rhythmic um, track has a subdivision, so it really helps you zoom in where exactly those um, notes are placed. <laughs> It's all in one position, up to here, and then, actually up to here, and then here, I like to switch, and then I go back that same way, so I make a little Tetris figure on the fretboard, if you will, it's like a little, a little Tetris shape, and then here comes this little um, embellished note, so you kind of want to slide it. It's important that you don't make this one too long. It's easy to want to go oh, all the way, but the less movement you make in this tune, the better. Now measures 5 through 8 at tempo 75 looped. Here is 5 through 8 at tempo 110 looped. Now the last phrase is probably technically the hardest because it is a pedaling scenario so we're constantly going back to that C sharp here. The chord here is F sharp but this is the 5 of the F sharp so it's pedaling to the 5. And then you're jumping up here, and then up here. So, and then here, F sharp, F sharp, you want to grab that octave like this. Might be good to isolate just those first couple notes. And it also really helps if you stretch your left hand accordingly. So as soon as we're done with that C sharp, let go of that position. And then this jump here, so I would isolate. But we do have rhythmically a little bit of a break in this here, so. But there's, the rhythm is a little slower here, so that's easier. And then the last figure is. Measures 9 through 12 at tempo 75. a great way to break a tune like this down. Make smaller bits, focus on relaxation. It's really easy to get into this forced state where you're trying to push through and trying to push harder, but you just end up working against yourself. So if you start feeling that, relax, take a deep breath, drop the hand, um, and try to play light. Experiment with playing light, not necessarily that you wouldn't want to dig in when you actually play the tune with, you know, 
the band. But as you practice it, it helps you relax. So playing it piano, playing it softly helps. It's important to repeat short sections. I'm a firm believer of short sections, looping, looping them. That's much more effective than trying to do it too fast, too soon, and then ending up falling into bad technique habits. Uh, you can find more information about what I do and how I teach and what we are up to at respaceblog.com. Me and Wolf are creating several new programs. Very excited about them. So stay in touch at respaceblog.com. <laughs>